Today, I'm going to be talking about hidden treasures, unleashing the full potential of Family Search's catalog. Usually, when people talk about Family Search, what they're really talking about is the Family Search tree. They say that they don't use Family Search because there's so many errors and anyone can change the information. With that, they give up on Family Search, and that's a mistake. First, Family Search is free. So, what do you have to lose? Plus, the tree is only a very small part of Family Search. Today, I'm going to talk about the records and the catalog. The Genealogical Society of Utah was founded in 1894 with the purpose to create a genealogical library. The GSU began microfilming records for genealogical importance in 1938 until 1999 when the online site Family Search was open to the public. These books, maps, and films, and fiche were only available at the Family History Library or through a loan program operating with family history centers around the world. Today, you have access to a continually growing collection of digital records from around the world through Family Search. Although you can use Family Search without an account, the catalog works best if you log in first. Accounts are free. Some content from the catalog is only available if you log in with an account or, or at a family history center or an affiliate library. A few records are only available at the Family Search Center in Salt Lake City. Restrictions are in place because of the limitations put on Family Search by contracts with the original owners and providers of the records. So here we have the ways you can get an account with Family Search. You can use your Google Access, Facebook, or an Apple ID, or you can create your own account using a password. All you need to get an account is your first name, last name, birth date, create a username, create your own password. You really have to have a recovery option and it's best to have both email and mobile number so that if you forget that password or username, you can get it back. You choose whether you want to get messages with discoveries about your ancestry or updates and information about events. And if you are a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, then you can add that information you'll have access to a few things that are different than everybody else, but very little. And then you click where it says, I agree to the terms and have read the privacy notice. Like any library, the Family Search has a catalog. Only about 20 to 30% of the collections in Family Search are now indexed. That means that when you go to search historical records, you are not searching all of Family Search. The catalog is where it comes in at that point. So to get there, you go to search and you choose search and go down to catalog. Now, one of the first things you'll see is a blue banner. It's telling you that there have been changes made to the way place names are grouped and named. This is a big change in the background, but should not make too much of a difference to you. You can also click where it says, learn more. And when you click on that, you'll find that you have information about the Family Search catalog. When you search, you have a number of choices. The most common thing to do is to search by place name. 
And because the catalog is like, it, it is arranged by places. It's arranged by countries. And in our case, it's countries and states and counties. In other countries, it might be a different jurisdiction, but it is uh, arranged mostly by place. You can search by surname. Now, if you just take a surname of uh, your surname and put it in there, you will probably not find anything in the catalog. But if you think there's been a book written about your family, then searching by surname may find that book. If you know the exact title of a book or collection you're looking for, for you can search by collection or author. You can also search by subjects. And one of the best things that you can search by is keywords. You can get a record about, say, Catholic records or Welsh records by searching by keyword. You can also search by call number or film, fish, and image number. Now that's useful if you are using Ancestry because sometimes when you search an index on Ancestry and try to look at the original record, it says it's not available. And if it's not available, it may have come from the Family Search Library and it may have a number. And you can search by that number in the catalog and find the record that was not in Ancestry. Available has three categories. If you wanna see anything that's available, then you keep it on any. If you're only wanting to look at online records, then you want to click online. If you're looking for what is at a particular family search center, you can search by family search center. Over on the right, you're gonna see two interesting things. One of them is WorldCat. And since 2014, Family Search submitted their entire catalog to WorldCat. If you find a book in the catalog and it's only available, it says it's only available at the Family Search Center in Salt Lake, you can look at WorldCat and maybe find it at a library that's closer to you or a library that has interlibrary loan. Archive Grid is a collection of archival materials and is also a place where you can find items that might not be in the in family search. I usually leave it to any. One of the places that I am searching and doing research is Shelby County, Alabama. Now you'll notice I put in Alabama comma Shelby and there is a drop down that gives everything that has that combination of words. There's a Shelby County in Texas and Tennessee and Ohio. I don't want any of those. I want the one that is in Alabama. And you'll see that it goes from largest jurisdiction to smallest. So you know, each one of those states will have United States first, then the state, then the county. And most of our records in the United States are filed at the county level, sometimes at the state level, and only occasionally at a smaller jurisdiction like a city. When I put that in and I look at the results for the Family Search Catalog, it shows the, it still has this United States, Alabama, Shelby, but it has all kinds of different categories from business records, cemeteries, through all kinds of index, our census records, church histories, correctional institutes, court records. And I can use that little arrow on the left and it'll, it'll open up and show me more things. So I'm gonna look at the bottom and I'm gonna choose church records. 
So when I open up church records, there are six records that it says are here. Alabama was primarily a Baptist and Methodist state. So the first thing is Baptist churches in Alabama. And you need to be very careful with the date ranges because you could look for something. Uh, maybe you're interested in something that was in 1805. Well, it's not going to be in this Baptist churches of Alabama. Sometimes you get a very short range Sometimes you're lucky and you have a big range of dates that it covers. Wow, look at what it has for Baptist churches in Alabama. It's a large publication that's only on one marker film reel, but it covers a lot of different churches in Alabama. And although originally it gave us that big range, you'll see that for individual churches, it might not be as large a range. I have relatives in Montevallo, and down here in the middle, you'll see that there was a Baptist church in Montevallo, but all they have is 1856. Looking farther down, though, I do see where the, the uh, record is. It's got a little camera here. There's no magnifying glass, so it is not indexed. So when I go on that camera, this is what I see. This is what I would see if I was in Salt Lake City. This is a film. And up here at the top, you can see that it has images. I'm on image one of 1,483 images. There's a leaderboard that said that when they first filmed it, it tells it was filmed in 2005, and it does cover church records between 1813 and 1981, but you saw that not every area or every church is covered in that time period. Over here on the left, you'll see some icons that help you to navigate through a microfilm. You can make it bigger or smaller, so you can zoom in so you can really read what is on that microfilm, or you can zoom out. You see the little group of squares, that will get you back to that beginning film where you can move quickly from one screen to another. When I look at the first one, what I see is it was a it was a bunch of folders. They have microfilmed folders for each of the church that's going to have information like you would find in a vertical file. At the top, it shows that I'm on image five of that large group of images. The next page is the history of the Baptist churches in Alabama, and it has several pages that talk about the beginnings of this particular church. And if your person was a Baptist minister here, you might find some very good information. Going back to my Shelby County, Alabama, most of us, one of the big things we're interested in is vital records. So if I open up to see what vital records are available for Shelby County, I see some things that were, the author is the daughter of the American Revolution, which is the DAR, and they've put together some things. I see a book here that is by Marilee Beatty Haganess. I see, and halfway through, I see marriage records of Shelby County, Alabama from 1824 to 1942. That was from the Alabama County Courts. That's the one I'm going to look at because right now that's probably going to have all the information about marriage records that I might want. When I get to the next screen, I get the information about the authors. It is a manuscript that's been filmed. 
it shows that there are 12 microfilmed reels. And you can see in red here that it is available online. And at the bottom, you can see a little magnifying glass. And that shows us that you can search this record. So I'm going to click here, see my search, and it brings me to a collection page. Family Search has these collections. They are indexed. And one of the first things that you should do is look at how to use this collection. Because when you look at that, it will tell you if there were any counties that were missing, if there was any areas that were missing, time periods that were missing. So I'm going to look for my uncle. He was Milton Orr, and I'm just going to put his name in because I'm looking at the Alabama County marriages. I don't need to put in any more information. And I do find records for him. The very first one shows him as a groom. He married on the 14th of June in 1939. And his spouse was Joyce Gray Garrett. Next to it, you'll see a couple icons. The first icon, it looks a little like a family tree. And that shows that this actual record has been linked to someone in that family tree, the worldwide family tree of family search. The piece of paper takes me to a record about it. And here I see their extracted information. They have Milton Lior, who was a male. He was 24 years old. He was estimated to be born in 1915. They have his parents' information, his spouse's information, and her parents' information. Over on the left, it says check image availability. And when I click on that, I see that there is a problem for me. The image is only available at a family search center or an affiliate library. So this particular record, although I can get the extracted information, I have to either go to a center or go to a library who, that is, a, is an affiliate library. Let's look at death records from 1920 to 1927 by Marilee Hargness. This is a book. When I look at it, it says that this book, you can see it's got a subject class which shows a call number. And it says it's available, but it is only available at the Family Search Library. So how could I find this book? I can go to where it's, I, I didn't point it out here, where it says, try WorldCat. When I go to WorldCat, it shows that this book is available in a lot of places, including the Fort Worth Public Library. And I can get that in person. I want to show you an interesting record that you could find through the Family Search catalog. This is Alabama Shelby County Estray Records from 1890 to 1927. My goodness, what are those? We're going to go to the next page. It's going to describe it a little. It says, this is a preliminary description provided to allow immediate online access to images. The images have not been reviewed. So Family Search is trying to make records available to you as quickly as possible. So these were digitized and sent to Family Search online so that you could see them as quickly as possible. So I'm going to hit that little camera, and this is what I'm going to see. This is an actual book. You can see it's a book. And when I look into it, the first few pages have an index to that book. But I'm going to show, and I'm going to show you that index right here. And when you actually get to the record from that index, 
you'll see that there was a lost horse. This said, the first entry says, one horse, a light bay color with a few red specks over him, iron gray mane and tail, blind in left eye, seen on night before, and it says a foot, something about his foot ankle joint. These are lost animals that have been found. Wouldn't that be neat if you could find a record like that about your ancestor who found a loose animal? Another area that I research is Georgia. I research in Stewart County. So I did a little search for Stewart County and I wanna look at land records. Land records are not often indexed yet. They are available through the family search. You can find them on the, when you search all of the records in the family search, but they're not indexed. So when I go to this, I see that the deeds and mortgages have an index that I could look at. That index is from 1887 to 1905. And it looks like this. It's big. I'm looking for a grantee whose name is William Barker. The pages are original pages and you can see at the very top, it says the grantee is listed first, the grantor is second, and where it's recorded is also listed. So when I look for Barker, William Barker, I see that it is in book K on pages 42 and 43. Going back to the Georgia mortgages on book, I can see that there is a, file that has book J and K. So I'm going to click on the camera for that file. It's going to bring me to this page. Well, what's the first record? The first record is book J. That's not what I want. So one of the things you have to learn to do when you're looking through these films is when you're looking at the top, you can see that I'm on image six of 652. This film has both book J and book K. Book K is probably about halfway in between. And when I scroll down, I eventually find book K. I'm looking for that page 42 and when I find 42, I find that there is an indenture between William Baker and it is on this page, little difficult to read, but it is on this page and available for you to find if that is your ancestor. Going back to the family search catalog, the first page on family search. This catalog is extremely helpful for you to find all the records that might be available on family search, not just those records that are indexed, not just those records that you can find by doing a search. Are there any questions? The first question I see in here, uh, somebody was wondering, is the call number the same as other what other libraries use? No. The Family Search uses a different method of putting call numbers on their books, so it will not match what you'll find at other libraries. You just stated that Ancestry may show a document is not available and that it may come from Family Search. You then say that there may be a number where you can put in, so talking about the film fish image yes. number. Yeah. Um, where is the number listed in Ancestry that the document's it's, not available? Yeah. It's usually listed 
in the description of the index. It, the end, when you go to it, it will show that it's not there and there'll be a description of where they got the record from, and that will have the number in it. How can we search the records in the microfiche catalog that have a key, uh, which means that they're locked? My local family history center is closed. Will they ever be opened for us to use and search online? That is a difficult thing. If it has the key, it means that it is not available to search except at a family search center or an affiliate library. And that's what I would suggest that you check. Because many times, if you don't have a family search center near you, there'll be a library that's close to you that's an affiliate library. And if they are not, you can encourage them to apply because it's not that difficult to become an affiliate library. Somebody was asking, like, what exactly is an affiliate library? Is it only LDS? Um, someone was asking if we are an affiliate library. Uh, to answer that part of the question, we are. An affiliate library. So as long as you're on our Wi-Fi, you can get into mo many, if not most of those locked records with a couple of exceptions. Yeah, the locked records are kind of interesting because they are not, availability is not all the same. Some of them uh, you can get at an affiliate library and a family search center. Some of them you can only get at a family search center. And there are a few things that are only available at the family search library in Salt Lake City. From my understanding that some of that has to do with whatever agreement they made with the institution that has the original records. Yeah. It's like, it does. It's, it's not the choice of family search. They would like to have everything available for you to yeah. see. But many of the, and that's part of the reason why you want to have a login, because there are some records that are not available to you unless you're actually logged in. So it's kind of like loaning a record to you and they know who you are. Yeah. So you want to, you know, you can look without having a, an account, but you may have some things that you can't see that'll have the lock, that the lock would go away if you were logged in. So the next person said that their local public library is an affiliate library. Usually I take my laptop. Do I have to log on through one of the library's computers or can I use my own using the library's Wi-Fi? I think that depends on the library, but I- Yeah, most of the time, as long as you're on their Wi-Fi, you can do it. This lady asked, I have two family documents that could be helpful for other researchers. I'd like to offer them for scanning, but I would like to retain ownership. Is that possible? My understanding is they would not, under the catalog, accept a single document, but the place that you should put them is under the family tree. You should attach them as memories to the individuals who are listed in the documents. And then anyone who is searching those people will see your documents, but you'll still have them in your hands. Another place you could also put it, um, not to try to advertise for us, but you could also let us scan the document and we would put it within our family resources database. Uh, now, Mr. Witcher is in the background. He can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong here. But our permission to digitize form, it does not give us ownership of it. It just gives us permission to put it online. So send us an email and Good we can idea. talk more. Yeah, but definitely do what Jamie said too. How do I narrow down the index to a particular book, i.e. J through K? I'm going to back up on this screen and show you this. Do you see here where there are different, uh, there were different films that had different books. And this one was book A to B. It covered the, it was the first book they started and it was 1828 to 1833. So you would narrow it down by choosing which one you wanted. If I was looking for 
uh, Q to R, I'd be using this film. Now, this is a really good example that has a book that's an index. So you start with the index and it will tell you where your person is in the book and what book they're in. See, when you look at here, this index showed the grantees, grantors, and where it was recorded. Now it's kind of hard to read all of them, but if you look at the first one, it says book K, and then there's all these ditto marks. And those ditto marks mean that all of these records were in deed book K. And so that's when you would look back here and bring it down to which, which book you were looking for. Now, sometimes there's no generalized index and you have to look at an index that's within each book. And usually books have an index because guess what? The, the people who were using them needed to find them too. These were not created for us. They were created for an official use and they needed to find the records. The next person was wondering if you can show how to find an affiliate library, um, not necessarily a family history center. I have that page pulled up on my screen. I can share my screen really quick. And so if you, honest to God, do a Google search, family search library near me, the very first link, find a family search location, this will be for both um, the family history centers and the affiliates. So let's go to zoom in. This will show you both the family history centers and the affiliates. So these green ones are the family history centers and the orange ones are affiliate libraries. You can also, if you click filter, you can filter it to one or the other. But somebody was asking if the book is noted in WorldCat, is the book available online? Not necessarily. Yeah. Um, you can check Internet Archive and see if it's online. You can search it on Google if it is uh, I. I think the copyright date right now is about 1926. And so if it is published after that, it's under copyright. And therefore you're not going, to, you're probably not going to find it online. Sometimes people put it into the public domain and it is online. So the next person was saying that they heard something about FamilySearch adding new records in a new place on their website, like they're transitioning to a new location. Uh, she can't remember exactly what they're referring to. There's a new catalog. I didn't show you the new catalog, but there is a new catalog which catalogs only those things that are available at Family Search uh, in Salt Lake City. And they're no longer adding to this uh, current catalog, uh, and things are getting put onto that one. Right, right. Um, and as you said, things are being added as images and they are uh, no, not yet even cataloged. Right. Uh, somebody also like brought up in the chat the, the new AI full text search, which is super exciting. I love you it know, so much. That's what I was trying to remember when I had my senior moment and it's family search labs. Yeah. And going to Family Search Labs, you can go to the experiment there. And one of the experiments is the uh, index are almost there. Yeah. Got yes. it. Got it. Yep. At the very there bottom. Now you need yeah, to be very logged bottom in. Of that page, choose View Experiments. And you want full text. Go to Experiment. And this is one thing that is really fantastic because this has now, allow, now allows you to search mostly wills and land records, deeds. So, okay, Jess, Jesse Williams, good idea there. Now see where there's a deed there? That may be your ancestor, it may not. This is the page for the deeds, and deeds are have not been indexed very well. 
This is also an interesting one because as you look at it and see where it says Jesse Williams, do you see where it looks a little strange? That's called a long S. And many people will look at that and think that says J-I-F-S, GIFs, but it's really J-I-S-S, J-I-S-S-E, Jesse Williams. And so it found those. And on the right, there's a full transcript. It is done by AI. Uh, it's very useful if you want to just quickly scan it and you're not as comfortable reading the handwriting. You can export it and you can, yeah, you can or download it. it or copy it. And as I said, it is, um, it's, it's pretty accurate, <laughs> but it's very, very uh, useful for quickly looking through something. Now you can see here, this is an image group from Montana or Monona, what is that? Uh, no, Monona, yeah, Monona, Iowa. Iowa. Never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That's all right. But... And it's from volume six that covered from the letters T through Z. They alphabetized this. And the creator was the county. And it gives you those, uh, the family search. Can you click on the image group there? That will bring you over to the deeds. And I think you can click there again on the image group and you'll see the whole thing. It just, yeah, they, it brings you to the beginning. It begins you and you see the whole row that you would, you know, about. Uh, which looks like index in the front. Typical. Yeah. 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 It has an index of the filings of these deeds. And then, and that's frequent. Frequently you're, in your books, your index is either at the front, sometimes it's in the back, and sometimes there is a separate index. And if it's alphabetical, you should be sad because you want it to be in the original order that they were put yeah. into the books. Someone just brought up a, a good point. And this was something that I was suspecting, but I wasn't quite sure if this was actually true. But someone said that uh, when you're searching using the full text search, it will search de like deeds and probates that are actually locked if you were at home. So I, I have seen that. I have had that happen a couple times and this is so new. I'm not sure if that's just the normal way it works or not, but I have seen things that appear to be locked that I have found on that uh, labs. I think they just want as many people as possible using it so because the more people use it the more uh, bugs they'll get and then they can work on fixing those bugs so maybe they're making and what, things what the what the good thing about that is is that when you're looking at regular indexes such as you find in the catalog you're going to see that they're telling you like the main people who are involved the person who wrote the will you're going to find the uh the, the, not all the people in the document. And that lab search searches for all the names any place in the document. So you can yeah. find your person who received money from their parents and not necessarily with the person who wrote that. The next person said that when they checked a few months ago, there was a hold on applying to be an affiliate library. And do you happen to know if that's changed? I, I honestly don't. Yeah. Um, I work at a family history center and I've been to affiliate libraries, but I'm not involved with how it, they get. Yeah. Maybe too many of them came forward and wanted it. You know, may, that might have been, maybe it was a COVID thing and they're catching up. Check in with them again, though. Doesn't yes. hurt to ask. Yes. The next person said that they also research a lot in Stewart County. There are a couple of really good index books in Stewart County, a couple of books written in the 1940s by the DAR yes. that are indexed and provide Bible records. 
Oh, this actually isn't a question. She just wanted to make sure that we were aware of I, them. Yes, I know all those books. Yeah. I, think I probably, yeah. I spent hours in, in their county looking through their books and then found them all online later. <laughs> yeah. But it's fun to hold the big books. The next person said that they were told by a genealogist at the Family History Center to use the Family Search Research Wiki instead of the catalog because the links are more up to date. That could be true in some cases. And I, I also do a, a talk on the wiki and the wiki is, is my favorite place to start for any research, especially if it's research in an area that I'm not very familiar with because it will have links. It has links to uh, the different um, cat or things in the catalog. It has links to uh, other like ancestry and find my past and and my heritage it has links to lots of different records it's it's excellent place to start the last question i'm seeing in here which is actually related to something i'm seeing in the chat they want me to show again how to get to the family search labs so i'm going to share my screen again okay you have to be logged into your family search account in order to see it. But it, once you are and you're on the home page, you scroll all the way to the bottom. Family search labs, view experiments. And if this is your first time, this button right here will be try it. But once you use it, it'll look like this. And you would press go to experiment. And there it is. So much fun. Um, it, some, it is fun. It has yeah. been just a, an amazing thing that they have made available. It's such a game changer for so many people. Like, you know, land, like in property research, probate records, but also like if you're doing African-American research, those are the types of records you need to go through with a fine tooth comb. And this helps you do it. So it's, yes. I can't wait for it to be on everything. <laughs> AI is changing everything we're doing very quickly, and we can't even guess what tomorrow will bring. Yeah, seriously. Uh, someone has put in there the actual uh, URL to get to it. If you don't want to scroll down, it's yeah. just familysearch.org forward slash labs. That appears to be the last question. Thank you, Jamie, for such a great presentation. I'm sure uh, everyone was very excited to learn about the catalog, especially for those who haven't, didn't even know it exists. It, I come across that a lot. So thank you so much for, for sharing with us. And thanks everybody for joining us. Thank you.